footprints without feet. Have you seen God? I mean, I'm asking this because I have battled with this question many times. When I was a child, I was guided to the temple to see God. But every temple I went, God seemed different. Though he remained the same, the adornments changed. So I concluded that the decorative piece of stone is God. I asked, where can I see God? I was told that he is everywhere, but I cannot see him. This is how the theory of invisibility was born in my mind. Then I thought, if he is invisible, then maybe if I become invisible too, I can see him. To crack this doubt, I tried hiding myself. I couldn't turn invisible, now can I? You can guess how that ended. In vain. As I grew up, I was shown movies where invisibility temporal was held as fantasy and was used to shock people or scare them. Yet, invisibility became a tool to get things done according to one's wishes. So, my question is, is God invisible or does he use invisibility as a tool to get us to do things? If he is called the creator of the world, did he create angels as well as demons? Well, take time to ponder on these questions. Coming to the story on hand about the scientist Mr. Griffin. Now, do you think invisibility can be created with scientific tools? I am asking this because I moved on to discussing about the scientist. If you tell me that invisibility can be made using science, it certainly is not easy or we would have been successful by now. What are some special qualities of a successful scientist? They must have a keen eye for observation. Presence of mind is necessary to try out new techniques fitting the experiment, analytical thinking and knowledge to form patterns with an experiment. Can you tell me if Griffin also possessed these qualities of a scientist? How? What was the great feat that Griffin had achieved as a scientist? He had managed to turn himself invisible. He carried out experiments after experiments to prove that the human body could turn invisible. He took some rare drugs that made his body transparent like a glass. But he did not turn completely invisible because he remained solid like a glass. With this in mind, I want to think of the statement, we may be able to cover up our mistakes. We cannot get completely rid of them. How much do you agree with this statement? Once a human receives a boon, chances are he misuses it. Same thing happened here. You know what he did? Guess, a lawless man as he was, he got revenge on the landlord that evicted him. Let's pause for a moment. His name seems interesting, doesn't it? What do you think means by Griffin? Can you tell? Griffin is a mystical creature with the body of a lion and head of an eagle. Our protagonist also seems like a mystical being because he is invisible, isn't it? Well, fate is a troubling friend, right? If he wanted to create mischief with his invisibility, he had to get naked. But the chilly cold weather of London streets became a problem because he was now homeless as well. He would spend nights in shops and steal from grocery stores to live. Having a powerful gift may not benefit you always if you don't use it properly. After going on like this for a few days, getting almost caught once, he decided to book a room in a local inn. He bandaged himself, wore a large hat to cover his face, dark glasses, false nose, etc. to hide who he was. My reason for coming to Iping is a desire for solitude. I do not wish to be disturbed in my work. Besides, an accident has affected my face, he told the landlord's wife. Being the man that he was, he didn't change. He stole money from the inn and the landlord became suspicious. To check the credibility of Griffin, he decided to inspect the room. The room was empty. They checked everywhere but no sign of anybody. Suddenly, 
there was a sniff close to Mrs. Hall's ear. A moment later, the hat on the bedpost leapt up and dashed itself into her face. Then the bedroom chair became alive. Springing into the air, it charged straight at her, legs foremost. As she and her husband turned away in terror, the extraordinary chair pushed them both out of the room and then appeared to slam and lock the door after them. They suspected witchcraft. So, they called the local police constable. Instead of waiting for the constable, Mrs. Hall went to his room again and to her surprise, he had returned mysteriously. I want to know what you have been doing to my chair upstairs, she demanded. And I want to know how it is that you came out of an empty room and how you entered a locked room. The scientist was always quick-tempered. Now he became furious. You don't understand who or what I am, he shouted. Very well, I'll show you. What happened then? He starts removing the bandage and everyone is shocked to see no face under the bandages. He keeps undressing himself and people understand what he is up to. He is down to removing the last piece of his clothing, his shirt, when someone catches his wrist to prevent him from turning completely untraceable. As we read the chapter, does the title have any relevance to the lesson? Footprints without feet. Why do you think the author named the chapter so? No matter what, whether you are caught doing a bad deed or no, your footprints will always give you away. The truth will out. From this saying, footprints become the truth. We had discussed the qualities of a scientist in the beginning. How are those qualities apt for Griffin? He was observant and analytical because he was able to create a new drug. He had the presence of mind to remove the bandages when he was to be arrested. You can follow his pattern of deception. Though he was a scientist, what made him bad? His motive, isn't it? He used his invisibility for harassing and stealing. Do you think he even regretted his decision or the experiment? Think about it with respect to the end. Write the sketch of Osable.